Now, we're talking a lot about growth on this program, and we've often outlined just how much growth we might get in the future if we get tax cuts and we get infrastructure plans and we get some deregulation. We do see growth in the future. Joining us now is Nicholas Eberstadt. He's with the American Enterprise Institute. This gentleman is a demographer, and he's an economist, and he's brilliant, and he's a guy that I read all the time. And I follow you religiously, Mr. Eberstadt. I'm not just uh, being flattering here. You really are good at what you do. And what you've been saying recently is that when we don't have growth, as we have for the past maybe a generation, all hell breaks loose in the economy, and we're in for a miserable time. Spell it out for us, please. Amen, Stuart. You've got that. Well, since about the year 2000, America's had a new normal growth rate that's been considerably lower than our previous post-war norm. Uh, and we've seen uh, not only much slower growth, but we've seen the bottom drop out for the labor force, with labor force participation rates way lower for men and women than in recent memory, you have to be in your 30s now to remember when the American economy was healthy. And all sorts of bad things happen with slow growth. There's been a flight from work by men and now increasingly by women. Uh, there's the uh, reliance upon disability insurance programs as an alternative income lifestyle. And with disability insurance, comes Medicaid, comes OxyContin uh, prescriptions for Medicaid subscribers. And uh, all of this is bad for our society as well as for economic growth. Well, does economic growth, let's suppose we went to 3% growth and maybe 4% mm. growth. Does that solve some of the problems that you're talking about? Some, but not all. Uh, I fear that the miracle of the market isn't going to take care of everything, certainly not in the next couple of years. I mean, figure it this way, Stuart. If we were back to work rates of the year 2000 for the population as a whole, we'd have 10 million more people at work today than we've got. Uh, 10 million is a very big number. Yes, sir. Uh, People who have dropped out of the workforce, especially people in the key 25 to 54-year-old groups, uh, a lot of them, as I say, are habituated to disability insurance lifestyle. A lot of them have been caught in this awful opioid lifestyle, too. Drawing them back into the market isn't going to happen, I think, just with fast growth, although a lot can be done with faster growth. Nicholas, I don't know your politics. When I ask you a political question, in a poll, four out of ten of people 30 and under had a favorable view of socialism. I don't think socialism gives you growth. I don't think it's an answer to America's problems. You want to make a comment on that? Well, it, you can't di redistribute what you don't have, right? Yes. <laughs> that was a very brief <laughs> comment, Nicholas. I was going to give you at least another 10 seconds, but if you don't want to use it, you don't need to use it. Right? I mean, you can't redistribute what you don't have. People want to be on an escalator, and the problem is that the escalator looks badly broken for the bottom half of our society. I think that's why there's been so much of a drop in trust in our institutions and in our country, or at least it's related to that. And if we get the escalator going for everybody, it's going to be really good for everybody, too. Good stuff. Nicholas Eberstadt, a pleasure having you on the show. Please come back again, sir. We, we admire you. Force me. <laughs> if you, Thank if you. you insist, you got it.